and her highly effective management style. Ho mai te paki paki, Jackie Harema. Do we just talk into the, oh, here. Uh, kia ora koutou. Before I talk, I'm going to introduce some of our other partners and Tash has um, come up as a hoa for me. I'm um, a bit nervous this afternoon, so um, can we have some of our, our te paihininga partners who are in the audience please stand up? I know you're all looking at me like we don't want to stand up, Jackie, but please stand up. I can see some of yous. Te ao. We've got Muma, Tanya, Rua Pōtaka, Huakina. Who else is, oh, um, te kaho te rangatahi. Papakara, I know you're here somewhere. Of course, Manireo Marai. Where's Clayton from Te Puna <laughs> Um So today I'm going to talk about um, Te Paihiringo Tamaki's response during our COVID um, period, which as we've all talked about already. This will be very much focused on our Auckland response. And of course, as um, Tash and many others have talked about for Auckland, we were probably in lockdown more than we weren't. Um, we were coined the name Tamaki Makovid, so our response um, really was a, little, was a lot different to some of the other responses um, that happened around the country. How do I know if it's working? Tasha's actually going to speak. She's not just sitting there to um, support me. She will speak around some of our South Auckland <coughs> mahi that we've done as a collective. <clears throat> So this is um, our trip that we took up north when we joined with the um, Taitokero Collective. So Te Paihiringo or Tamaki is made up of iwi providers, we've got Māori providers, we've got marae. There's about nine, ten different providers in our collective, and together we service the 200,000 Māori that um, cover Tamaki Makoto. In the North Shore we have Te Puna Hawaru, who have been there for a long time. South Auckland we've got Muma, Manurewa Marae, Papakura Marae, Huakina, um, and in West Auckland, we, of course, we have Waipaleida. We've also got our local marae like Hwani Waititi, Rua Pōtaka. Gosh, I'm going to forget someone. I always forget someone. <laughs> please, if I, if I forget you, please tell me afterwards. Um, and all of us have come, we have been working as a collective for the last eight years, really coming together, um, understanding what works for our whānau in Tamaki and all of our own unique strengths in our different communities. I've been really honoured to be the chair of Te Paihiringa for around, gosh, three years. As Iri alluded to, I'm also a very good chair waipa. Um, <laughs> so this is just a picture of us when we travelled north um, with um, Te Hui Tuhono. So again, Tamaki Makoto, of course, 200 Māori live in our area. We, as a collective, try to support 200,000 Māori in um, Tamaki Makoto. And of course, in 2020, we were locked down, I think we were in lockdown three to four times. And in 2021, we had 107 continuous days of lockdown. And I know Tash and some of the others have talked about this, what this means um, for our people. But out of those many lockdowns, we have a lot of mahi to do to um, support our people as we come through COVID. Mana motuhake. So I've sort of um, coined the presentation in line with the po that Kitty talked about. So it requires some really good leadership. This was some of our leadership teams that led our response from 2020 to 2021. Um, and what that required was some vigorous advocacy as, and relentless advocacy, as Kitty has talked about, really understanding actually we know our communities best our response is unique to our community and really driving that home with the funders that we know what we're doing. We are best placed to support our whanau to do that. I want to acknowledge Tanya who took over from Muma um, February, February this year? Yes. Um, and came on as the CEO, CEO there and has um, worked with us before then anyway, but formally as a CEO since February. So she should be in that picture as well and acknowledge Wynne who has left but was also very instrumental during that time. <clears throat> okay, Ngako Māori. So 2020, you know, we all talked about, um, we went into lockdown. Very much all our mahi was underpinned by Ngako Māori, and at the heart of that was ensuring our whānau got the support that they needed in that moment and time. In Tāmaki, that meant hygiene packs. Who loves hygiene packs amongst us all? Yes! <laughs> Kai packs. And again, those are just connection points. So you all know that. That's actually for us to get in the door, connect with our whanau, understand what's happening for them on the ground, and really be able to provide some wraparound support for them. Um, we set up uh, distribution centres. For Waipareira, we were su supported our partners to set up their own distribution centre. 
distribution was not part of our um, what we did normally, um, but we managed to, gosh, hundreds of thousands of um, hygiene packs went through our distribution centre. The marae, you will see that a lot of them change their business as usual, and Tash might want to, she has talked about some of that already, but the marae became the epicentre for their communities, providing kai, providing connections, and this is in 2020 and 2021, what the marae provided again changed to address what was happening in their communities. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Some lovely pictures of our nannies. I, everything that we did, of course, is um, fight for your whakapapa. These, a lot of our mahi and you all talked about already was protecting our nannies, our kaumātua connection, ensuring that they were safe. And of course with our nannies come all the other whānau members that come with them, but all our partners and yous have already talked about it, was how do we support our kuia and kaumātua through this, making sure that they're safe. A lot of them were ringing us because they wanted to know why they weren't allowed in the office. Um, but that was, in 2020, that was a lot of the emphasis for all of us, protecting our nannies and our kaumātua, looking after them, making sure that they're well insulated and ensuring that we are able to um, fight for our whakapapa. Our tamaki now. So off the back of 2020, we all went through that, but then we actually had to think about strategically, what does tamaki look like for us now? What do we want it to look like in five years' time? And everyone had an economic summit. So during our economic summit, we brought all our partners together again and really looked at what do we need in tamaki that's going to bring um, some economic recovery that's going to support our whānau to thrive. And we saw the emergence of a lot of side gigs, like side hustles, through Ngātini Whetu. A lot of our single mums established their own side hustle business. How do we support them to continue to grow, to continue to grow their business? And how do we support their so the social enterprise that was emerging? So one of the key factors um, for Te Pai Heading or Tamaki was to really understand the economic environment that we were operating in and supporting our whānau to thrive economically. Does people see Boyd um, in there? Mm. We were lucky to have um, Minister Hinari attend that hui, um, but we had some key strategic priorities that came out of that. Tamaki 10,000 is one of our key strategies, where we support 10,000 Māori across Auckland to get into employment, or better their employment that they have, better their opportunities, and or support them to get into new learning opportunities. So some really key targets that we have to achieve as a collective, and we have um, worked over the last, since 2020, to understand what that looks like. For Rua Pōtaka Marae, they've got a lot of innovation happening there. Actually, all our partners do, and I'm going to um, miss someone out if I talk in particular about one or the other, but they have a um, social supermarket that has emerged out of there, and everyone has got pockets of innovation that has emerged as a result of Tamaki 10,000. Earlier this year, um, we had the Regional Skills Leadership Group, which is part of MIMBI and put, brought together by Minister Sepuloni, endorsed Tamaki 10,000 as the Māori strategy for Tamaki. So um, our partners are really in some really strategic positions to be able to push for what our Tamaki is going to look like past COVID. <coughs> Sorry, I'm going to go back. You know, um, and you have all talked about it, but um, what we've noticed, say, and you all know, for Māori, by Māori, to Māori, definitely has been the best response that we've ever had um, during this period. We, all our leadership, did not wait for a government to decide <coughs> what was the best approach for us. Again, overnight, as you all did, we all changed our workforces, we redeployed, and we, <coughs> excuse me, and we designed workforces that was going to address the need in our community in that moment. So again, for Māori, by Māori, to Māori, is underpins everything that Te Pai Heading or Tamaki does, as you have all already talked about and acknowledged, underpins everything that you do as well. Ngāti Ni Whitu, we continue to run Ngāti Ni Whitu through, through both lockdowns. We had over 250 whānau graduate from Ngāti Ni Whitu. A lot of businesses came through at the end of it, um, and we will continue to support them as they... Oh, God. <coughs> Excuse me, can I have some water? <laughs> Do will speakers get water? No. <laughs> um, as they establish their businesses, and um, we've had a lot of them who will be who have started to employ other Māori um, in the community. Hui uh, Tūhono, this is um, our, group, our group up north meeting with the Taitokero Collective. 
through COVID, we have, we've started to push back on MSD. We've started to push back on Oranga Tamariki. And this Whare Tūhono was us starting to push back of, thank you, Tash. <laughs> was us starting to bougie, bougie water too. <laughs> was, <laughs> Blum and Aucklanders and their bougie water. I know you're all thinking that. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> I still think many pick out did me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Oh, hui tu hono. Bougie water. <laughs> so we travelled north on our bus, all of us, um, lovely on the pahi, um, and met with the Taitokero Collective, and again worked strategically to understand how do we start to push back on the Ministry of Health? What does that look like for a for Māori by Māori response? And collectively bringing Māori partners, iwi, together from Tamaki and up north, you're covering how much percent of the Māori population of 25 live in Auckland? Probably around 40 to 50 percent of the Māori population. So together, collectively as a group, we are a very strong group um, doing that. COVID round two, Tamaki with COVID. I haven't even got to um, the second round, so 2021, again, we were in lockdown for 107 continuous days. We moved our workforce from being one around hygiene pack delivery, kai delivery, connecting, to one of lay vaccination, rats testing, PCR testing. And this is us when we took our group to South Auckland. South Auckland had one of the lowest Māori rates for vaccination. Um, and as a collective, we come together and thought, what can we do to support each other to be able to raise those um, vaccination rates? So I'm going to ask Tash to talk about that because she's one of our South Auckland providers. But this is our team that we all came together at South Auckland and we took on Papakura, we took on Manurewa, and we took on Pukekohe as part of our um, Whanawata Battalion in South Auckland. Well, kia ora. I think it's just, just to acknowledge that um, it, was, it took a collective and a collaborative Whanawata approach to be able to address the needs. And um, we knew that we couldn't do it on our own. And we knew that um, the only way to actually get to our whānau was to be able to put us out there in mass. So um, having a really coordinated approach was really effective for us in South Auckland. Uh, and we did that with the support of all of our partners. So Manurewa Marae, Papakura Marae, Huakana Development Trust, uh, Tūriki Muma. Healthcare, Muma, we all um, came together to strategise how we could utilise the workforce that we created for Te Pai Hiringo Tamaki. I think when, you know, when I think about some of the questions that came in our last panel, you know, it talked about how do we move whānau water forward? Well, this is a version of moving whānau water forward. It's um, bringing your resources together in your rohe and being able to share the responsibility and the load to be able to um, to take service to our people and uh, we did really create a battalion and, and, and I think it's also about the, the languaging that we use. We changed the way we talked and we changed the way that um, we um, communicated the ideas or whakaro out there across our, our kaimahi. You know, it's unheard of to work together. You know, if we, if we took COVID away, we all worked in little silos. But um, I think through Whānau Water, we have learnt to be able to put egos aside. We have um, been able to leverage off the collective thinking, the collective agendas that we, sh a shared agenda that we had to be able to um, ensure that we were, we were making sure that we strived for the best tamaki Makoto, and um, we did it together. Leaders, uh, relationships are really key. I think when I look at this photo as well, um, it takes great courageous leaders, CEOs, that have to be able to put aside their own daily business to be able to think about a collective. And that was all part of the um, strategy of building a Tamaki Makoto Battalion and then a South. South Auckland is very unique. We're very different to West Auckland. West Auckland has one main provider, that's Waipareira. Everybody knows that. When you come to South Auckland, you have to work in a partnership. We have to work and share together. We have Huakana, we have Papakura, we have Manurewa, we have Muma. So we, had, we have to work together to be able to um, service our community. And we, we still continue to have that thinking in Whakaaro to, to do this for our people. Kia ora, Tash. 
The other thing about Matataki too is our, um, the leaders have really started to advocate and push against um, the government departments. So um, on Friday we signed a, a new agreement with OT where we've pushed back and designed our model of delivery for what that will look like in Tamaki. MSD, we're still um, bullying them along the way, but we're in a real crisis situation for um, our rangatahi. Two thirds of them have chronic um, absenteeism from kura. We have nearly double the unemployment rate for non maori in Tamaki. So we really, um, as a collective, are really starting to push on those ministries who have the ability to be able to support the development and support our communities, but are not letting go of the control. So um, as leaders and as our collective, we're really pushing back on those ministries again. Ministry of Education will be the next one because our young people are not thriving. They're not attending that school. And in Tamaki, this is a real crisis for us. So that's where we've started to really focus and turn our attention on. Um, and Tasha's talked about it a bit earlier. This is um, some of the battalion, um, you know, when we learn to engage and how we engage with our um, communities. So the one on the bottom is where we were in Pukekohe. We did not find a site, we just set a site up on the side of the road. Um, and we made that work. I don't know, how many black power whanau live in Pukekohe? Um, <laughs> but there was a lot of them. <laughs> Um, and then there was, there's another one in the middle there where a guy is on Home D and we walked them, we walked our teams to his house, outside his house, he brought his chairs out and then we did his um, vaccination um, outside his home. So you have all got stories like this, but this is how we engage with our community, taking it to them, um, the way that we promote the vaccination is through, we make a lot of noise on the... Um, on the streets, we have our cars going up and down with the speakers, um, and we have social, mes social media messaging that actually connects and relates to um, the people that we're trying to engage with. So I thought that picture of the guy with Home D, um, you use the all got stories like that, but that's how we work and um, connect with our community. <clears throat> to Manakohanga. So this is the aspiration and what is it that we want for our whanau. We have, across all our partners, a really ranga strong rangatahi workforce that we've developed as a result of COVID. We have the youngest vaccinators in New Zealand um, who have each done at least a thousand whanau each. We have, gosh, multiple, um, we have multiple people that can swab for um, COVID. We have lab technicians who can test saliva, and we have cold chain experts, and a lot of them are our young people that have thrived um, through this COVID period. All <laughs> <clears throat> they actually, they were so quick to pick up, eh? The CIR stuff, they were actually telling our super users how to do it. They were doing their, um, doing things that I'm sure they weren't allowed to in CIR. Um, but they picked it up so easily, and for them it was building their own confidence to be able to participate in a pandemic that they can tell their mokopuna about. So we're really proud of the um, rangatahi workforce that our collective has grown, and as Tash has spoken about and many others, how we will continue to grow them. Some of them have already started to learn how to do the flu vaccine, the MMR vaccine, the measles. So we don't put barriers around them on what they can and can't achieve. Um, there was no age limit when they rolled out the lay vaccination vaccinated workforce. So 16 is the youngest vaccinator that we have. Um, and she vaccinated some of her teachers who got a bit of a shock when she came out to do them. Um, but that's the, f that's the faith and the knowledge that we have that our young people are able to do this. Lucky that we had a uh, um, rogue doctor like Dr. Rawiri Jensen, Jensen um, who really, again, leadership, eh? being able to understand that you've got to push those boundaries, um, push those policies because what's as best is the best interest of our whanau. And he worked with our workforce to be able to um, grow them and ensure that they had the right experience to be able to do this main. So you need those leaders like that that will take a chance and a risk, and all of our leaders have done that. <clears throat> they, um, this is, we call them yangatira. Um, those young rangatira that who, they ran their own events. I know in Manurewa they did a lot of their own events. Um, they offered Air Jordans as prizes um, because they know how to connect with their own. They're the best peers that they can connect with. So, and, and one day they did over 400 vaccinations themselves of, um, and 80% of them were 12 to 16. So really knew how to connect with their um, peers and bring them to an event like that. <clears throat> we had a TikTok with Matua Rangi in the background. Um, 
But this is again was how Rangatahi connect with their own, communicate with their own, and their ability to engage their audience from their worldview. And they took Matuarangia along with them. Um, I don't think it's going to play, is it? Carl, we had technical issues. This is Ngahua. These are the outcomes. These aren't the only outcomes. There's probably there's way more outcomes, but. As a collective, we, step, we set up 57 vaccination clinics. But remember, we're talking 200,000 Māori in Tamaki, but also we had more non Māori that came through. 59 mobile vaccination and testing units, eight distribution centres, eight community testing centres. In total, we vaccinated, oh gosh, I can't even... 370,445 whānau. Rats distribution, oh my gosh, Eight, 832,124, nearly a million rats tests distributed. And as Iri said, those rats um, lines went on for hours um, and people were really angry um, and really impatient, as you all know. Um, and Fano supported 256,000 through this period. So as a collective, this is some of the outcomes that have been achieved, but actually the meaningful stuff will be those Fano that talk about the connections, the support they received on the ground, the um, health connected they felt during a time when most people were isolated. Our workforce, over 60 lay vaccinators, 25 cold chain experts, 30 COVID swabbers, over 20 saliva testing technicians, and over 150 CIR trained super users. So that is what our workforce looks like before we went into COVID, um, and it will look again totally different in the next six to 12 months as we re-engineer and re-gear for what is looming over the um, hill for us, and that's really supporting our rangatahi and our whānau to recover economically through schools, um, culturally, um, and support them through this. Matataki, what is happening for Te Paihiringo or Tamaki in the coming um, five to ten years? We had a group of our young people attend the Māori Party. Um, yes, Rauri, Rauri was there. Um, <clears throat> Their youth parliament, actually, um, Māori Party ran their own youth parliament, um, and it's out about building their political knowledge. It's about building their political advocacy and them understanding what it, the responsibility that is theirs to support their, um, their community to flourish. A lot of them are also our vaccinators, um, so that is something that Te Paihiringa is supporting, the political growth of our young people. We also have all of us that are um, going for local board. Um, <laughs> local board. Um, seats across Tamaki. Not an easy thing to put your face on um, billboards, <laughs> as, as nobody would know. Um, but this is the next step for us because we have to be able to make decisions at those tables, whether it be local board, whether it be council, whether it be at the national um, tables that are already sitting at. We need people sitting at those tables on all levels to be able to influence decision making and have our voice and have our say of what works best in our community. So there's five of us. Have I missed anyone out? Please don't tell me I've missed someone else um, that are currently standing and bringing a voice, bringing a um, whanau water voice, a te pai a voice to the local board level. And another TikTok. We're not going to have a waiata, we're going to teach you a TikTok because you have been, um, we're on the graveyard shift after Kai when everyone goes to sleep. Deborah. So we're going to get our very young, where's some of our young people up here? Erihana. Deborah. Where's Emmanuel and Marae, young people? Renee. You all have to participate, and this is not just us um, standing up here doing it either. So we're going to do a TikTok to finish this off. Eddie Hanna, are you going to...? I think just lastly, just a mihi to Te Kaho Tarangatahi, who's amongst all of us as well in our Te Paihiringa network. We forget about our rangatahi, so this is a good connection. So te ao, e too. 